What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you three different ways to prevent and control late blight using things from your house. Let's go. All right, so all three of these control methods that I'm gonna give you guys today are sprays. That means you're gonna be putting them into a pump sprayer. So if you don't have that, I'd recommend going out and getting yourself one. I picked up this little one gallon pump sprayer at our local hardware store, super affordable. We're talking like 15, 20 bucks. Doesn't need to be anything fancy, but definitely worth it. Now, I will say the first method I'm gonna give you guys is one that is not necessarily in everybody's home, but it's one that if you uh, are fond of visiting a health food store, you probably have in your home, or if you live near a health food store, you can pick this up for relatively cheap. Now, a little bit goes a very long way, and this is calcium magnesium citrate. Now, this is something that is a supplement, but it is extremely effective at controlling blight. So effective, in fact, we've used it on our squash plants as well as our tomato plants, and it has worked so well this year. And so basically, this is gonna give you not only a, cal uh, a calcium supplement for your plants, it's also gonna give a magnesium supplement for your plants, so it's a fertilizer, but it also helps to control things like powdery mildew and blight. So I'm gonna show you how you use it. It is just super simple. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your calcium magnesium citrate, make sure to give it a good shake up. If you don't give it a good shake up, it has a tendency to kind of settle out a little bit. Then into your pump sprayer, you're simply gonna put two teaspoons of the uh, calcium magnesium citrate. Now I recommend starting weaker before you go stronger because you can always go stronger, but if you end up putting too much on your plants and it ends up killing them, that's not a good thing either. So make sure you start weaker, and then if it's not effective, you can always go up from there. And that, go, that applies to all of these. Then all you're gonna do is simply add some water, shake it up really well, and you're good to go. All right, so once you have your mixture in the spray bottle, it's super important that you spray down your plants thoroughly. You wanna get the tops, you wanna get the undersides, even the stem of the tomato plant. It is very important you spray all pathways that the blight could be traveling up the plant. Now what this is gonna do when you soak these leaves in the calcium magnesium citrate spray is essentially gonna create an environment that is not hospitable for the blight spores to colonize. See, blight spores need a very balanced pH and the surface of your leaf is a wonderful environment normally for that. But if you take a spray like this calcium magnesium citrate and you spray it onto the surface of the leaf, it's going to swing the pH such that the um, blight spores can't colonize the leaf anymore. And so what you'll find over time is the leaves that are affected with blight won't heal, but it won't continue to spread. And it will prevent the, the blight from spreading up even further on the plant. Any blight that has already started to colonize the leaves, those will actually turn dry, uh, dry and brown and the leaf will eventually just drop off the plant. And that's how you know it's working. So um, once you spray your plant though, definitely do not uh, just instantly think it's not working and ramp it up. It's gonna take a couple days for it to start to take effect. I would say after about three to five days, you'll know it's effective or not. And then from there, you can up it or try some of, the, some of these other methods. So let's go talk about the second one now. All right, the second control method for blight in the garden is through aspirin. Now, a lot of you have probably heard about using aspirin in the garden, and it's in fact very effective. My grandparents were using aspirin in the garden. How it works is it doesn't necessarily prevent the blight from colonizing the leaf, like in the case of using the calcium magnesium citrate spray. What it does is it actually forces the plant to go into overdrive. It essentially boosts the immune system of the tomato plant. It's a stimulus that actually causes it to produce defense mechanisms that actually will defend and ward off from blight actually colonizing the leaf. So it actually works from within the plant rather than uh, you know just coating the leaf and killing off the blight. So it works a little bit differently, but it is very, very effective. And in fact, in studies, not just placebos, not just you know old wives tales, but in actual laboratory studies, aspirin has been found to increase the overall blight fighting capabilities in solanense crops. So peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, uh, any nightshade crop like that by up to 45%. So not an incredible, incredible amount where it's like 100% effective, but it does increase the overall blight fighting capabilities by 45%. So that's actually a marked increase and something that in the, uh, in the biology world would be considered statistically important or you know it's, uh, it's a large enough increase to where it's worth taking a look at. And so it's super simple to apply. I'll show you how to use it. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take one 300 milligram tablet of generic regular old aspirin 
and drop it into a jug of water. I prefer to use about one tablet, one 300 milligram tablet in about a gallon of water. A little bit goes a very long way. Now make sure if you don't have, if you haven't already crushed it up to really mix it up well, you wanna fully dissolve that in the water so there's not a bunch sitting at the bottom. Now this method works as a preventative. So what you wanna do is you wanna use this before you get late blight. A lot of our tomatoes are already starting to show some signs of late blight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray down some other plants that can get late blight, like my peppers here. So I'm gonna spray down our peppers and basically all I'm gonna do is just simply coat the leaf. Now you can also water the plant with this as well. It's not going to harm the plant. It's very, very effective and it works really, really well. So I'm simply gonna spray these plants down here. Make sure you get them nice and coated just like you do with any other spray. It's gonna to help to actually absorb into the leaf. The leaf is very absorbent and it's actually gonna take it into the plant through the leaf as well. It's like a foliar spray. Uh, so that is how I use it. And you can, like I said, you can spray it, you can water it. However you get it into the plant, it will help to work from within the plant. So uh, even if you happen to get like a strong, a strong rain and it washes it into the soil, that tomato plant is still gonna take that up. But you need to be using this on a pretty regular basis throughout the season, or at least a couple weeks before you typically will get late blight. Because like I said, once you have late blight, you could use it and it might be slightly effective, but it'll be way less effective if you already have the blight than if you were to use it as a preventative before you get the blight. So a couple weeks before that usually happens, give your plants a good aspirin treatment. All right, and the third and final one that I've got for you guys today, and there are lots of others, but one that I use all the time in the garden, one that is kind of my fail safe. This is the break glass in case of emergency option for me, and this is baking soda. It is super effective. It is probably one of the most widely used sprays to control things like powdery mildew, early and late blight, tons of different things can be controlled with baking soda. And how this works is exactly the same as the calcium magnesium citrate, only you're not gonna be getting quite the, uh, the fertilizing benefits that the calcium magnesium citrate provides. But if you're just looking at just an overall super effective control for blight, this is your go-to. I absolutely love this. And I think just about everybody has this in their house. So it's super simple, just like all of the rest, you're simply gonna take your baking soda. I prefer to add about two tablespoons to a gallon of water. You don't wanna go much more than that right off the bat. Like I said in the first tip, you wanna start weak. Start weaker, see if it's effective, and then from there, you can ramp. Any more than about three to three and a half tablespoons has a tendency to actually burn the surface of the leaf. You'll actually end up killing the plant if you go too strong, especially with baking soda. So I add about two tablespoons to a gallon of water and then make sure to shake it up. All right, now a quick little tip for you if you're using the baking soda. On a rainy day like this, I prefer to use a couple drops of dish soap. It just helps it stick to the leaf surface a little bit better because if it washes off, there's no benefit at all. Now, you don't have to use dish soap if you don't want to, but if you do go the dish soap route, make sure you use something that is gray water safe. That basically, basically means that it's safe for use in the garden. Some dish soaps have a lot of surfactants in it or a lot of uh, chemicals that can actually be really harmful for the garden and the overall soil health. So I prefer to use something that is approved for gray water. Just a little tip for you guys. So just like with the tomatoes, you can also use this on your squash for things like powdery mildew. I absolutely love using a baking soda spray for things like powdery mildew because it is so effective. Now, one of the things I will say, regardless of if you're using the first spray, the second spray, the third spray, or even another spray that you heard about when you were sitting at the doctor's office in the waiting room and some lady had Good Morning America on and they were going through these random little spray tips, you, know, yeah, you never know where you're gonna hear these garden tips at these days. But regardless of what spray you're going with, make sure you spray in the early morning or late at night. I prefer early morning so they have a chance to dry. Any chance of dew or you know, heavy rain at night is gonna be eliminated. Early morning is the way to go for me. If you spray during the heat of the day, you are definitely asking for damage on your leaves. It can actually end up killing your plants because of the fact that the sun basically has a magnifying effect and when the leaves are, uh, are basically during the heat of the day, 
The leaves don't have that much moisture content in it. Most of it's down in the roots, protecting the, uh, the moisture that's in the plant. It's a dehydration protection mechanism. But during the uh, early morning, there's more water up in the leaf, and it actually will kind of help to protect the leaf from using a spray, even if it's organic. So whether or not you're using, like I said, this method, the calcium magnesium citrate, or any other method, spray in the morning, you'll thank me later. Now you're probably asking, how often should you be using the baking soda spray? I prefer to use it about once a week. I don't want to use it much more than that, otherwise I have the chance of killing the plants and over applying it. Like I said, with the calcium magnesium citrate, when you're spraying anything on your plants, you want to give it about two to three days to see if it was effective. After that point, you can then ramp. You can go from like two tablespoons to maybe two and a half tablespoons, maybe three if it's a really bad outbreak. But again, after about three and a half, you're really going to end up killing the plant. But as I've said before, what's worse? Trying something that's maybe going to prevent it or just letting it go and letting it kill your plants anyways. So a lot of people fear spraying their plants down, but once you have a bad outbreak of something like blight or powdery mildew, the blight or powdery mildew is going to kill your plants anyways. So if you feel like going up to that three and a half threshold, you can do that as well. But I would always suggest starting, starting lower, uh, starting weaker, and just kind of applying it you know, every week or so until it becomes effective or until you get the results that you're looking for. If it doesn't ever go away, it might just be one of those instances where you say, well, it's worth a shot. It's late in the season. I just wanted to get a few more weeks out of my plants. And sometimes that's all you're going to get is a few more weeks. And that's fine too. It's never going to completely remove it. And at some point, like all, you know, all good things do come to an end eventually. So uh, this is kind of just buying you some time in the garden, but they can be very, very effective. And they can also be effective in the early season as well um, against things like early blight. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with someone that you're sitting in the waiting room at, uh, at a doctor's office with. <laughs> I'll catch you all in the next episode. As always, this is Luke from the My, Gard My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care. Bye.